My name is Emily Foshag, and I'm a portfolio manager at Principal Asset Management, leading our listed infrastructure investment capability. We've seen a number of positives as well as challenges that have emerged over the last 12 months. On the positive side, a couple of things to mention. First is on the transportation sector, airports in particular, we've now gotten to a point where we have most businesses that have normalized passenger traffic post COVID. There are some, still some parts of the world, particularly in Asia and in China, where you don't yet have traffic levels or international traffic levels, I should say, back to, to pre COVID levels. But for the most part, on average, you've seen transportation infrastructure businesses have normalized uh, traffic patterns relative to where they were pre, pre COVID. Um, that's a great proof point, of course, right? Because there was a lot of challenges in the market and questions really around, will we ever get back to pre COVID traffic levels? And by and large, you've really seen that. So that's a great thing for conviction in the long-term fundamentals of these businesses. The other opportunity or positive that we've seen is we've seen some passage of historically relevant clean energy transition related policy, um, particularly here in the US with the um, Inflation Reduction Act that was passed in 2022. And what's exciting about that set of policies is that it's really nearly 400 billion of policy support that provides further tax incentives for solar for wind, but also some newer tax incentives for green hydrogen, as well as incentives to invest in carbon capture utilization and storage projects. And so all of this entire package really is providing an impetus for greater investment to lead or to, to reduce carbon emissions in the United States. And that's quite powerful. You've seen similar legislation, of course, in Europe, particularly with the Repower EU uh, plan. A lot of that also related to how do we ensure increased energy security on the European continent in the wake of the Russia-Ukraine war. In addition to clean energy transition policy, we also believe that renewable energy economics for solar and onshore wind are arguably better than they've ever been. And part of that has to do with the fact that there's such significant demand from corporates and utilities to sign contracts for renewable energy that you've had power purchase agreement prices nearly double in some markets. You also, of course, saw significant component price increases in terms of the capital investments required to build renewables, but that actually is moderating. And so therefore your spreads, your ability to earn an attractive spread over your cost of capital when developing re new renewables today is quite compelling. On the challenging side of things, of course, uh, the first topic that I would mention is really around affordability. And so obviously with the inflation that we, prints that we've seen in developed and emerging markets globally, that's created challenges for customers' ability to pay for new infrastructure, right? And so uh, largely how that has functioned is that for the infrastructure businesses that have strong relationships with regulators, they've been able to reach agreements oftentimes that is a net neutral or positive for shareholders but provide some short-term relief for customers. An example of that was in the French toll road sector where the companies were asked to provide discounts to individuals that were traveling on their roads, but ultimately was able to ensure that it was an MPV neutral decision uh, for investors. And so that's something that we would describe as a win-win. Besides the affordability conversation, of course, the biggest topic perhaps that has changed over the last 12 months has really been interest rates. And we continue to see challenges related to that. Again, for capital intensive businesses, higher interest rates is going to be a headwind for earnings, absolutely. But what interest rates have also created is they've created this historical valuation opportunity for listed infrastructure. And so we as stock pickers, as individuals that are focused on identifying quality infrastructure businesses trading at compelling valuations, this is a great opportunity for us. We're actually quite excited given all the opportunity that we're seeing as a result of the way the public markets have priced in interest rate expectations to these stock prices.